yeah we had to get rid of that dimension because we, like I said we're going to do it a little bit differently so and this is the by the way height is the actual going to be the actual dimensions of the spring it's driven it's driving the shape of the spring so now we it looks bad because our relations were wrong but we'll, it's going to it'll straighten out so now what I'm going to do is before anything happens I'm going to check something. I'm going to create a dimension, uh, a parameter. What are my parameters? I'm going to create one. It's going to be called un uncompressed, and it's going to be a real number. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the nominal height. does not equal uncompressed what I'm going to do is and on my if statements I, I like to just go ahead and put the end if right now so I don't forget it so everything between this is going to and everything between my if statements I always just put a space this is my personal preference so if they're not equal I'm going to make them equal so I'll say that then uh, they're not equal. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and say, okay, so that means somebody changed the nominal height. As soon as somebody changes the nominal height, I'm gonna set uncompressed equal to that nominal height. I'm also going to set my height equal to the nominal height. So that means that every time somebody changes nominal height when they're like making a copy of the spring it will reset uncompressed to be the nominal height and it's going to go set the height to be the nominal height and this is only going to happen if these are different if somebody's changed nominal height well the nominal height's only going to get changed once with that that's when you first create the spring so all this is just for being able to copy the spring easily so what it's going to do it's going to set just set the nominal height to equal height everything's going to reset it's going to reset this height to make, make, make it match uh, what the nominal height is. Now I could go in and change height because it's not in my relations. I can change height at the next higher level because this statement will be false at the next higher level because once once I regenerate this is going to become false and it won't do any of the stuff in here. Once I've created the spring this will not happen so I can vary in my next higher level I can make height um, my variable in my, uh, my flexible dimension. So I'll do that and uh, I'm going to just go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go to my uh, properties. I think that's uh, model properties. That comes from file. I put another one. Prepare. Where's prepare? Model properties. And uh, a couple things I like changing right off the bat is this is a metric part. I got to change the units. And I'm going to change, well, I'm going to leave it right now because. I'm just dealing with flexibility. I'm going to change the flex. I'm going to add flexibility. I'm going to put this do not edit as my feature for that. I'm just going to make sure that works. Let me just make sure that by changing the nominal, now this, this dimension is only, oops. not connected to anything it's just okay so let's make that uh, 30 looks like the spring is working it's reset now I'll be able to change because that statement is false I'll be able it said in the in the in the message box that it, it was uh, in the relations it wasn't let me change it because that statement was false or true rather that statement was true it wasn't gonna let me add that dimension so now let's go back to our Let's go back to our flexibility and, and add that, that dimension now. So this is the one I'm going to make flexible. Turned red. Hmm. Okay, so that's the only thing I want to. That means in my next higher level, that's what I'm going to use in my my assemblies. I'm going to use that. I'm going to flex that, and that's going to change because this one actually changes the length. If I, in fact, if I edit that, which it says don't, but just to show what's happening, if I change that to a 20. I regenerate. Look at nominal height stayed. 
the nominal-height state. So that's what's going. That's what's going to be happening in the assembly. Nominal height will stay nominal height. So that's how we're going to do flexibility and drive this. That's all. It's all to drive this so we can get some uh, some information in this. So let's go ahead and well, actually, we could just go and recreate a new spring. We're going to change nominal. Let that make that 25. Regenerate. And one thing I want to change is my units. So let's go change, oops, change my units. And I'm going to go to, let's go to millimeter, Newton. I'm going to go to this one, set that one. And I've already got them set for, for metric. They are, they're already metric dimensions. I don't need to convert them. So I'm going to select this second that interpret them. And in, in, in other words, they don't change their values. OK, close that. Yeah, let's regenerate, make sure everything's okay. Now let's go ahead and start driving our our test. Before we do that, we need to discuss some um, string functions. In the relations, let me just put this at default. And now we're going to discuss string functions because we're going to be using them to display our, 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 our real number as a text string because this was this is a text string it's a it's a string it can't accept any any values of uh, real numbers so we're going to have to convert a real number into a string and unfortunately creo doesn't have a real number to string it has integer to string however so we're going to be able to create uh, our our string by doing some manipulations to our real number so we could extract what we need from it to create a string uh, with a decimal point in it so let's let's go through those now. So we're going to be using three string functions. One is ITOS, which just stands for integer to string, and it converts any integer into a string. A string is just simply text. And uh, for instance, uh, if you look at the example here, uh, you'll see the 2.465679 is a is a real number. It's not an integer. So when you can when you turn that into a string, it just rounds it off, and you're going to left be left with uh, a, a three. Uh, it's going to come out as a whole number to three. So what we're going to need to do is manipulate this so that we include the digits we need for our decimal. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this decimal place over two spots. So we're going to capture uh, two extra characters so that when we do uh, do the ITOS to it, it's going to contain the decimal portion that we need and it's going to be rounded up. And the second one we're going to look at is uh, string length. It's just going to take um, our string and just count how many characters are in it. It will count blanks too. It's just how many characters, whether it's a blank character or not. So, for instance, the word steel, as in this example, if you uh, ask it what the string length is, it's going to say five because there are five characters in that string. Okay, and the last one we're going to use is the extract uh, function. And extract has three arguments to it. The first argument is the string you want to extract parts from. The second is uh, where do you want to start extracting from? And it's saying here that position one is the leftmost character. So position will tell you uh, where you want to start from and how many pieces of that string do you want to read? And if you look at this example, it says um, Harry equals extract PTC comma two three. So it's going to start at position two of that string. Now PTC is a string. It's called I want to be an expert in pro engineer. So uh, place number two is the blank spot and then it wants to read three characters. So it's going to do the W. It's going to read the blank. It's going to start at the blank and it's going to read that blank and it's going to read the W and A. That's three characters. So you're left with a, uh, a space the W A. And we're going to be using this to extract uh, parts of our whole number and then parts of our uh, the, uh, the fractional part of our number, the decimal part of our number. I need to rename one of my dimensions on that text height, so I'm going to just go open it up and uh, rename it. Properties. I'm just going to call this the text. H-E-I-G-H-T. 
now I have a print, now I have a dimension called text type. And this is going to be my message, so I'm just going to name it message. I wonder if I should call that something else. Maybe the force? Yeah, maybe force. Yeah, that looks better. So let's go back to our relations again. I'll paste that stuff back in there. So starting with this first one. If the height is greater than nominal height, message equals this, and I'm going to change the text to outside diameter. I'm doing this because when you do copies of the spring, if this outside diameter gets gigantic and this text turns out to be very, very small. So I'm just saying, okay, it's going to be a proportion of uh, the outside diameter. It's going to be, the heck, text height is going to be half the diameter. So if anybody creates a very miniature spring or a very large spring, this text will stay proportional to it. So that's why I'm putting this in. If you're not going to copy, if you're never going to copy the spring, you don't need any of this or any of the text height controls, etc. And uh, on the next one, I'm going to say, if the height is equal to nominal height, that means it's not being compressed. I'm just going to put, put in it, uncompressed. And I'm going to set the, the text height to very small, an eighth of, eighth of the outside diameter. So in its normal state, the message will stay, say that. Now the next thing, if the height is less than nominal height, in other words, it's being compressed, I'm going to do a calculation on the force. So I'm going to do nominal height minus the height. Is going to tell me how much it was compressed and I'm going to multiply that by rate. So I'm going to need a parameter called rate and it needs to be a real number so I'm just going to leave it R-A-T-E and I'm going to set it to be some odd number so we can see decimal places. So I'm going to set the rate like that and now here's our integer, integer to string function right here. I'm creating a new parameter called NS. It's going to be a string. It's going to be created on the fly as a string. It's simply going to be the force times 10 to the decimal places, however many decimal places I, I, I need in my... So if I if I put, I'm going to create it on the fly here. Actually, I'm going to create it down here. I just need an integer for decimal places. So I'll create it down here. And I'm, I'm going to change it to an integer. I don't need a real number here. So I'm going to say initially 2. Okay, so Decimal place is going to be two, so it's ten squared. So what I'm doing is, if it's uh, what I'm doing is, if it's uh, two decimal places, I'm going to I'm going to multiply the force by ten to get that decimal place in the real number to move over ten, because when I do an interest, integer to string, it just rounds to the nearest whole number. So I'm moving that decimal place to where I need it. Now in S has the number that I need, but the decimal place is missing. I need to, to split NS up into two pieces, the whole part and the fractional part. So what I'm going to do there is, uh, first thing I'm going to do is calculate how long that string length is. And string length is going to be an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of letting it get created here, I'm going to go here and create SL, and I'm going to make that one an integer also. I, I can leave it at zero because it's going to get calculated here. So string length is going to be an integer, and it's going to say, what's the string length of NS, which is the, the whole number that we just created here. So now I know how big, the, how long, the, how, many characters and how many characters that string has in it. Now I could say my force message is, so I'm going to extract, and we went over these functions earlier, I'm going to extract from NS this string that I've got. I'm going to say the string length minus the number of decimal places. So when you extract, you start with the first, so it's going to take the first uh, number in my string, the first uh, character in my string, and then it's going to it's going to start at the first position, which is the first character, and then it's going to move this many places. It's going to contain all these. So I want every character except for the last two. The last two are my decimal characters. And then it's going to add a period or a dot or a point uh, between them, and then it's going to extract the last two. So I'm just, this is how you extract the last two, it's the, the string, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in the string length minus the number of decimal places minus one, and I'm going to go the number of decimal, that's how many characters, I just want to see, in this case it's two, so I just want to see the last two characters in that string, and then I'm going to add this n for newtons at the end of my message. I'm going to set message equal to that force message. I'm going to set our parameter that's used down here in this, in this test equal to that force message, and I'm going to set its height equal to a quarter the diameter. So let's see if everything works. I'll hit the check mark, and apparently it does. 
think everything's nice and clean. Select OK. Now if I regenerate, my message changes. It's uncompressed. What happens if I try to stretch it? Now this, I'm, you don't edit this in the, at this level, but I'm I'm acting like I'm in a in a uh, in an assembly. If I'm in an assembly, I'll be changing this. So if I stretch this to 30, what happens to my message? It gets very very large, and lets the user know you just stretched stretched a compression spring. So that's a big error. I want to make sure. And when you do this, the envelope that the spring takes up gets big. That's why I made it so big because the I want to force somebody to see this. Now this will be on a layer. It won't be displayed, but I, it will make this envelope bigger no matter what. Even if it's on a layer, it'll make that envelope bigger. So now I'm going to go ahead and compress it. If I bring it back to, let's say, I forgot what it was, 25? Yeah, 25 was uncompressed. Uncompressed, no, no big envelope. Okay, now I'm going to start to compress it. Let's make it 20. I did put rate in, right? Yeah. Invalid symbol decimal the EC places found. Didn't I create that? I thought I created that one. Oh, I called it decimal places. It's DEC places. Yikes. Subtract that. Add DEC underscore P L A C E S. Sorry about that. And I want that to be an integer. And I'll check. Should work now. There you go. Oh, it's not giving me it's not giving me the correct number of digits here. So let's go fix that. So NS, let's take a look and see what NS is. Ooh, it's just fours times ten to the second. Oh I forgot. I guess <laughs> I got my decimal places set at zero. Damn it. Okay. Two. Regenerate. That, that was the problem. So now I have my force displayed 6175. If I wanted, if I wanted just uh, two numbers, it's going to be around. It should round out to 61.8. If I wanted one decimal place, let's go change parameters, and let's go change decimal places here. Let's make it just one. If I change that to one, I should regenerate and get 61.8. Yep. So this is working fine. So let's go uncompress this thing. This one that I'm not supposed to be editing. I'm going to redefine that now because this is a dimension I don't want anybody touching. So I'm going to hide it. I'm going to move it down here so you can't even see it. It's going to be hard to see that dimension. I don't want anybody changing this at the part level. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and edit that back up to 25. See how hard that is to see? Uncompressed, automatic. Okay, so that's working fine. I'm, on top of everything, I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Let's save. Okay, everything's been put on layers, so let's just go turn those layer, hide those layers, and get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so there's our spring. And as far as it relates, let's do some cleanup work. The first part of any relation is always put the date. I always do. See if we got everything cleaned up. Pretty much got an extra space here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that one. And I always like to leave uh, leave my cursor at the top. And also, you could put instructions in here. And uh, the next part. And in, in, in the next part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and do some more stuff on how to install instructions for your spring. Okay, now I'm going to explain why I did the uh, transition distance. Right now, let me just change this to no hidden so we can see it. So these points here, remember I did this at wire diameter. And then at this one I did from here to here is a wire diameter plus uh, TD, that transition dimension that I calculated. And it's, it's a lot farther than the wire diameter. And I base that on the, the gap that the, the spring has, what kind of gap it's got. I move this point as the gap gets smaller and or the wire diameter gets bigger. And I'll show you the effect that will have. Let me put shading with edges. 
and repaint everything here. And from here you can see this is where it starts. It was a wire diameter from here to the first coil. That's a wire diameter pitch. Now it changes from this pitch to the new pitch, the calculated pitch. It took it all the way over to here. So that's when the pitch was completed. So it makes a much smoother transition. Now had I changed that um, and made it just a wire diameter, just make the pitch go to the new pitch right away, the effect looks bad on some most, well, most springs, I think. But it looks, this transition looks pretty good to me. Trans, transitioning from this pitch to the calculated pitch in that distance makes for a nice smooth transition. But I'm going to illustrate, or demonstrate rather, how uh, that affects the look of the spring. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and edit the dimensions of the spring and get it into an extreme condition. So I'm going to make this 220 millimeters long. And I'm going to give it a wire diameter of 0.5. And then I'm going to give it a number of coils. I'm going to set it 39. Let's make it 38. So there's our spring. Let's change the inside the outside diameter to make that 8. I've got a usage for this size spring. So there's what it looks like. And look at the transition now. The ratio. It's going to, you know, still it's way out to here before it goes to full new pitch. So the transition looks good. I mean, it goes from all the way from, from, where is the start? Okay, it starts here and it ends there rather, and it goes all this way before it gets to a, this full new pitch, and that looks like a nice smooth transition. Now, had I changed that, let's go see. I'm a, just to demonstrate the effect that that has on it. I am going to change this transition distance, I'm going to just force it to be the wire diameter. And I'm going to forward slash star so it doesn't read anything after a forward slash star. So it's it's going to make TD just the wire diameter. Let's see what kind of a, an effect that has. So I'll regenerate. Now if we come down, look look at this, how it's transitioning. It transition it transitions very rapidly and the ends don't look right. And it get, really gets really gets bad when you charge, start changing the number of coils. Like say, if I went from, um, I don't know, I got uh, 38 coils. If I only had uh, 28 coils, look at see how it's starting to bend now. Let's make that uh, 20 coils. You can really see the effect. So there, a good example right there. You see how the uh, transition occurs from there to there. That's how quick it has to go. So it makes this, that doesn't look realistic. So if I regenerate that, that does not look realistic. So that's why I did the transition dimension. And I, that changes as the, the spring is compressed or the wire di diameter changes or the number of coils, whatever, that's going to that's gonna fluctuate based on those uh, parameters. So let's go put our, the original back in. And I'm just going to overwrite all this, backspace it. And that's the way it was. And then when I regenerate that, see how that transition looks a lot smoother? Look, it doesn't complete all the way until here. But that looks, it just has a lot better appearance. So, change this back to 39. So there's our new spring. And, uh, I'm gonna put the. Uh, I'm gonna make sure this thing works. I'm gonna change this. You don't change this one. This only gets changed at the. And I put it here so it's hard to change. And I'm just gonna go to the value, and I'm gonna compress this say 20 millimeters. I've got the rate set pretty high, so this is gonna be a ridiculous number. So I'll set that to 200, and regenerate. Now to see that force, I mean I got it on a layer, but if you want to see it, just put your your mouse over it and you can see it. So it's 247.0 Newtons. If I click on it, it just stays red and I could rotate around, zoom into it. So I could read it. So this this is working. So if I set this back, well, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify the nominals against, I think I changed that, didn't I? 220. 
let's make that 222. How about that? And regenerate. Nominals have changed, so now it's uncompressed. So you see the effect uh, that that text height has too. If I keep it proportional, it looks it looks good no matter what size you make that spring. Okay, let's go ahead and put in a user uh, component interface on this part and go try it out in an assembly to make sure it works. So I'm going to call my interface axis. I like to name my interfaces surface. First one is going to be the axis. Next constraint will be the surface over here. That surface. So my interface is now created and it's called a axis surface. Let's just save what I got. And now let's go open an assembly. And I've got one in memory already, so I'll just bring it up. So this is a uh, clip for uh, a gun. So I think it's a Ruger. Got it off the internet somewhere. So what we need is a spring on here. So let's go ahead and put our spring on. And spring. I'm going to use the interface. And instead of by value, let's just do distance. And I want my spring to go from this surface here. to that surface there. Select OK and finish up. Now the spring is being created. It's looking for an axis and a surface. So the axis is going to be this axis. And let's spin this around so we can get to that surface. And where my oh there it is. So this surface right there. Fully constrained should work. So let's shut off all our planes. Let's hide everything. All our layers rather. So that's what it looks like. Let's see if it works. So this is a this is a mechanism so I'm just gonna drag this piece down. Make sure my spring works. So I drag it down and the spring looks like it's working fine. Let's drag it a little bit more. Okay, so our spring is working fine. Turn the body on. So the last thing I want to do to this spring is make the closed ends, the closed coils here, variable. So right now it's set for, for a one closed end one closed coil per end. Let's make that variable. Let's, in case we want more than one closed coil on each end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the profile here. And let's get into a sketch view. And I'm just going to add another line to represent that. Just like I did for the coils, I'm going to add another, another angle dimension. And I'll just set that for five for now. So now I have that dimension, I better name it. So I'm going to right click and go to properties. Oops. No, right clicking, go to show dimension. Then I'm going to go to properties. Properties, I'm going to call this closed underscore coils. I'm going to copy that so I don't forget. Control C. And let's set that for one right now, for now. Regenerate. And now let's go to the relations. So right now, the things I need to change is going to be uh, the rough length is not going to change. TD is not going to change. What's going to change is the distance between three and four. This represents the closed ends right here, two times the wire diameter. It was set at two. So I'm just going to multiply that by closed coils and that should increase that distance if we change this. So the distance between three and four needs to be adjusted. The next one is the coils minus two. Now two is when I had it fixed at two. So I'm just going to multiply that by closed coils. 
right now it's set to one, so it's not going to change anything. And closed coils means per end. Like if I say two, that's going to put two closed coils per end. So I don't need this statement anymore because I'm making this variable. And then we'll go down here and I'm going to rearrange some of this stuff just to make it easier to read. So instead of uh, location 2 being a wire di diameter plus TD, I'm going to say that's going to be equal to LOC underscore 1 plus TD. And then location 1 is going to be times the closed coils. So as I increase this, it's going to push 2 further, further away. So that this remains constant. And I'll just make this a little bit clearer. So it's going to be minus location 2 whatever that value is, and this is going to be minus location 1. A little bit easier to read. And this is all going to be staying the same. I'll put my cursor here and say OK. Regenerate, nothing happens. OK, so now we could check it to see if it works. Show the dimension. That coil dimension is way down here. And I'm going to change that to 2. So I put regenerate. So it put two closed. So from here to here is one, from here to here is two. If I put three, it'll just make three of them. Let's try that. Number of coils is not changing. Number of coils is always constant. So now I have three. Okay, so that's, that's a nice little feature for the spring. And let's just get it back in a default. And I think that's going to conclude this little tutorial on how to make a spring.